Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I have so many new blushes that I've acquired over the past few months. I got overwhelmed thinking about having to film individual reviews for all of them. So we're gonna do speed reviews today. Uh, I have perfectly formed thoughts on all of these. I've tested them for a long time and I'm gonna apply every single product on my face and wash my face in between so that I can give you the most helpful review possible. Let's get started. I don't have any bronzer or blush or highlighter on because I want you to see the products just as themselves without anything else in the mix there. So all I have on is a little bit of foundation and concealer. And let me just tell you what I'm gonna review today. So we have so many different formulas and textures here. We've got the Say Dewy Blushes. They sent me three shades. I have the Bare Minerals Blonzer, the uh, Bounce and Blur Blush. Say Moi launched some cream blush sticks. I've got the ColourPop Cheek Dew. And lastly, finally got my hands on a Cover FX uh, Monochromatic Blush Duo. Let's get started with my two favorites, the Bare Minerals Blushes. Oh boy. These two might be my all-time favorite blushes equally. I don't know, man. Obviously, we've got to start here with the Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Rose. I will obviously swatch it for you on my hand first. It is what I would describe as a cross between a terracotta, copper, bronze, rose. It really is quite just like a rosy terracotta with some of that that sheen throughout it, and it looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. The interesting thing about these bronzers is Bare Minerals doesn't seem to use the language of like light, medium, deep, but Sephora does. And I think I've seen that that language has since changed because Bare Minerals has three shades. There's Kiss of Pink, Kiss of Copper, and Kiss of Rose, which is this one. And I don't necessarily think that they're on the light, medium, deep spectrum. Like, Kiss of Pink definitely might be the lightest, but Kiss of Copper, I think, is just as dark and pigmented as this. It's just like different tones. So don't let the light, medium, deep things scare you, even though I don't have the other two shades. I've seen swatches, and I think that they're, you know, equally able to be used across the spectrum. Um, maybe Kiss of Pink just might be a little bit too, like, pastel -y if you have dark skin, but I think this one would definitely work if you have deep skin because it is super pigmented. Because of that, I like to use my Eco Tools. I believe this is called their 360 Face Brush. Um, you can get it on Ulta. It was on sale for $4, but I'll link it in the description box below. So what I do, I just go right on in, a couple taps to make sure it's evenly distributed, and then, you know, maybe just do a little bit on the back of my hand first. And then I just lightly tap it on. You can already see that beautiful color there. If I feel like I have enough color, then I just wipe the rest off on the back of my hand. And then I start kind of swirling it around. And I feel like this blush with this brush is really perfect. And I'm going to sort of over apply every blush so that you can really see the color and the textures. That might be a little bit strong. So I'm just gonna take down the the blush a little bit with my favorite sponge, which is my Wander Beauty cushion. Cushion? <laughs> I don't know. I just think that the bronzer, the shimmer running through it, you can't see it on the skin at all. You can't see any glitter particles on your hand. It just adds that luminosity to your skin, which I definitely don't have on this side. And it, I mean, I could probably skip highlighter if I wanted to, but it's not like super shimmery by any means. Um, I just think it has that beautiful kind of airbrushed quality to the face. It's definitely a powder, so I wouldn't use fingers. Uh, I would definitely use a brush. And I just love that it's a cross between like a bronzer and a rosy blush. What more could you want? Um, again, this is like applied a little bit heavily. I would not use this much blush usually but I just love that color. It's everything I want in a blush shade. I love this so much. I haven't been reaching for any other blush. It's been really difficult to try to use anything else in my collection. I really hope Bare Minerals adds more shades because I think you could take this sort of bronzer hybrid idea pretty far with a lot of different 
tones and depths of shades because the formula is so buttery and soft and pigmented and blendable and airbrushed and perfect and I love it. 10 out of 10. Holy grail. You will see this Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur Blush in Blurred Buff. Say that 10 times fast. You can't. You will see this in my upcoming dupes video. I know, I know, it's coming. I'm trying to still find a dupe for the Kosas 10 Second Eyeshadow in Globe and the Hourglass Scattered Light Shadow in Ray so that I can film that video. Those are my two favorite eyeshadows and I can't find dupes for them. So I just want this video to be perfect. Anyways, you will see this in that video because this is a perfect color and formula dupe for the Hourglass At Night Blush, which you guys know is a favorite. This is more affordable and it might even have a better formula. When you touch this, it's that classic, you know, Maybelline, bouncy, <laughs> whatever blush. It's got that kind of um, hybrid formula between a cream and a powder, which is my favorite. Um, it's just not like a dome shape, but it is basically the same formula as the MAC Glow Play blushes, which are also holy grails, can't beat formulas for me. This is um, Blurred Buff right here, and that's Bare Minerals Kiss of Rose. But what I'm finding with these cream powder hybrids is that they just look airbrushed on the skin because you have that sort of perfectly airbrushed look that a powder gives you, but you have the skin-like finish of a cream. And so, you know, and also the ease of application of a powder. And so this is just a color dupe for Hourglass at Night. Hourglass at Night is like surprisingly not very red like it looks. It's actually quite an orangey bronze. So this to me is perfect. It's even better. It's got a little bit of that shimmer running through. And I would say this is not as pigmented as the Bare Minerals Blonzer. So I don't need to go in with the uh, Eco Tools Sheer Brush. Instead, I can get away with a classic blush brush like the MAC. I don't know what this is anymore but I can just kind of take a couple taps and barely anything comes off. And I tap it into my skin lightly. You can see that it is quite sheer because of that cream powder formula. You really can go in there a few times and you don't have to be quite as careful. And I have that experience with the MAC Glow Play blushes too. I have the Mauve Sunrise shade, which is also a favorite and it's gorgeous. It's like a mauve beautiful pink. And they also have like a bright peachy coral and a, a lighter pink. But I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to over apply here. But you can certainly build this up like you see on the back of my hand. It's buildable. Um, and so I'm just trying to show you the difference in the shades. If I were to compare the two, I would say the Bounce and Blur sort of cream powder hybrid looks ever so slightly more airbrushed because probably because of that formula. It's just so blurring. Um, it's called bounce and blur. It blurs. I think you can see that it really just blurred that skin, whereas this kind of adds a luminosity. So it really just, just depends on the finish that you're looking for in a blush. You can't go wrong. The shades are beautiful in all of the collections. Bare Minerals is just blowing me away with their blushes. Both of these, can't live without. I'm gonna go wash my face and let's see how this goes. We're back. Hopefully my skin looks okay. Let's switch it up with some products that did not work out for me. All right. ColourPop Cheek Do. Ooh, buddy. This one has stumped me. This is in the shade Beyond, which is this absolutely stunning cross between a rose and a chocolate. It's just so, so, so beautiful. So I'm going to go in and I watched Jessica Braun's video um, this morning where she reviews the ColourPop Cheek Do, uh, among a bunch of other products. And she just kind of like tapped it out with a sponge and she was like, oh, look how pretty it is. But where did it go? Where did it go? It just lifted up all the foundation and concealer I had underneath. You can now see that blemish coming through, which is actually helpful that I have that. So you can see that the coverage completely disappears of my foundation and concealer. It lifts up everything underneath. And if you use a sponge, the color disappears. So I'm going to show you with my fingers that the color stays better, but still lifts up the foundation and concealer underneath. And I'm going to let it dry for a couple seconds because I'll show you if you try to apply it again, it will 
completely patch up. You can already see here, I really hope you can see this. I keep staring at myself and I know that that's annoying, but I keep trying to figure out if you can see what's happening here, which is that if I go in and like try to blend it, see how I just lost that coverage on my cheek? Like normally, and it's like stayed there, that little missing patch. So then if I went in, I can feel that it's starting to dry on my hand. And if I go in and I try to add more because I want more of a cheek look, we just end up with a total mess. I don't like the texture. I don't like how um, not buildable it is. It pills, it lifts up all my foundation and concealer underneath. And now my blush is basically gone. There's, I have not found a single way to make this work. I think it's absolute trash. Don't buy it. Another product that really uh, didn't work out for me, the Samoa Tinted Lip and Cheek Balms. This isn't necessarily Samoa's fault. It's just that I'm finding balmy blushes are not my jam. They're not my jam. The Tower 28 ones, the Undone Beauty Lip and Cheek Palettes, these, pretty much any blush in a stick format that has that kind of like gel-like, kind of sheer balmy texture, I've realized is not for me. First, I'm just gonna show you the shades in case you do like that kind of format and you do like that kind of texture. This is the shade Charmed, which is my favorite, and it's this gorgeous warm watermelon pink. Then there's Tickled, which is this like bright, bright coral. And then there's Unfazed, which is very different from the other two. It's it's kind of a bizarre shade range, um, but it's this kind of uh, mauvey brown and it's more pigmented. So I'm gonna apply this. I feel like people will be most interested in this one. And again, I don't wanna completely shit on this formula. It's not that this is like a terrible blush. It's really just that I think that stickier or balmy blush formulas just take a little bit of extra time to blend out and I don't think they make the skin look very airbrushed. So let's try to ignore the tragedy over here from the ColourPop Cheek Dew. I'm gonna go in carefully with the ColourPop, no, not ColourPop, Same Moi uh, Tinted Lip and Cheek in Unfazed. And again, I don't want to say this is a bad product because I think Same Moi is a cool, new, affordable brand. Everything's like $5. Their visionary crayons are incredible. Um, but I'm just finding that you know, it's not exactly, it's not a bad blush. It's just that when I have others in my massive makeup collection that basically do the work for me, this kind of like sticky bomb texture, it just means that I have to kind of sit here, you know, blending it out. It does kind of always seem to lift up the foundation and concealer underneath. You can see these two little red spots I had here now are really showing through, whereas they really didn't do that with the Bare Minerals blushes. So I'm just at the point in my life where this would have been like totally my jam in my, my past life. I would have been like, yes, we love to swipe on a stick and go. But really I'm finding that like products that are more of a cream powder hybrid are just more beautiful looking on the skin and easier to apply. So anything that's kind of this like, you know what I mean, where you can see the color, it might be pigmented, but you can also see your skin underneath. I'm just realizing that, that those are the kinds of formulas that lift up my foundation and concealer and make it more difficult for me to do my makeup. Not bad products, um, just not for me anymore. However, the ColourPop is a trash product. Okay, let's take these cheeks off. Next up, we have the Say Dewy blushes, and they sent me three of the shades. Now, you might be asking yourself, Kate, didn't you just film a video reviewing the sunscreen where you said they kicked you off PR? Yes, that is correct, and I have an update on that situation. The founder emailed me directly, and she apologized for removing me from PR. She said it was a mistake and shouldn't have happened, so that was really nice to see. Um, she also said that she really valued my feedback. She wanted to continue the conversation. Um, I sent her a lengthy response back just about inclusivity and marketing, yada, 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 uh, and that I really hope that this impacts their decisions moving forward. I am looking forward to seeing if they grow from their sort of marketing fiasco about the Say Sun Visor sunscreen. I would have loved to see them make a public statement uh, apologizing for the marketing. Dr. Dennis Gross had a fiasco recently, and I'm gonna do a separate sunscreen review on that, 
but they apologized for promoting sort of misinformation about chemical sunscreens. It meant a lot to me that they apologized. I wish Say would have done the same, but I'm hoping that given the feedback around the campaign, I'm really hoping that because of that, you know, that founder's email, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for how they move forward. And I'm really hopeful that we will see good decisions from them. So I'm going to keep a positive mind about that. And I'm going to review these products and I'll continue to review their products. I'm sure a lot of you will have different opinions on the situation as you always do. And you always let me know. Um, but that's okay. You're allowed to have different opinions. Um, so now I'm going to talk about these. Since I have three of these, I'm not sure how I'm going to apply them, but I kind of want to show them all on my face. So let's figure that out. Um, first I'm going to go in with the lightest shade, which is peachy. You get this bottle with this kind of liquidy cream formula in this chubby doe foot applicator. The doe foot applicator definitely reminds me a lot of the In Beauty lip glazes. <laughs> and you know, I love those. And I haven't seen it in a blush format yet. So I was really curious about these. The formula of these is very interesting. So you've got peachy, rosy, and poppy. Here's my issue with the shade range. There's a fourth shade that is a sort of, you know, purpley berry that looks very beautiful, but a berry here would look very like disjointed. These are all warm shades. And that's where I think that this has missed the mark. Everything else about this product to me is spot on and they nailed it. But I just think that if they were gonna do a light peach, a pink and then like a poppy, they should have made this pink shade more of a cool toned pink. It would have made more sense if you had two cool tones and two warm tones, but to have two of these shades be so similar, I don't know, maybe they just see that that's where the opportunity is. People like to buy those types of colors more. I'm not sure, but these are just a little too similar for me. That being said, I'm obsessed with all three of these. All three of them are beautiful, but I think for consumers, it's probably gonna be difficult to decide between these two. I think what I'm gonna do to try to be most helpful is probably apply these two on my cheeks and then use this as like an accent over the top. So first I'm gonna go in with Peachy. This is definitely the lightest shade. And again, with Say's marketing, you know, I feel like they did this product a disservice a little bit because the models, again, apply such a small amount. They took the doe foot applicator and they literally do this and then blend it out. And I think that doesn't make the product look as pigmented as it is, except for this shade. This is the lightest shade. I don't think this, this would work on dark skin. But um, this is why this is my favorite because I can just apply it practically in the dark and I know that it'll look good. It just adds a very light flush of like peachiness. It's almost even neutral. And you know, if you see it on my skin, it's pretty, it's pretty close to my skin. And that's why I like it though. It is such an easy blush to swipe on and go. And these two shades are quite a bit more pigmented. And then the the berry shade is obviously very pigmented. That's what peachy looks like. Now let's compare with rosy. I would say rosy is probably my favorite because it's just got a little bit more of that pink while still being maybe even more on the neutral side than the others. The others are quite warm to me. Um, no, this is warm too. They're all warm. This one packs more of a punch. So if you're a no blush, no makeup makeup kind of girl, maybe go for peachy. If you like a little bit more of a cheek, maybe go for rosy. I think this formula is amazing. With that chubby doe foot applicator, it looks like it would be super thick, but the formula is actually incredibly thin. You can see it added definitely a dewiness to my cheeks, but I don't find that it gets oily or greasy throughout the day. In fact, I just think that these are one of the best, best formulas I've tried in a long time. This to me is better than the Glossier Cloud Paints. So there you go. You can see the cheeks are quite glossy. Um, you may or may not be able to see a difference between these on the skin. So this one is here, peachy. This one is here, rosy. And you can just see a little bit more of like that pink coming through where this is a little bit more of that peach. So I hope that's helpful. Let's take Poppy, which is 
honestly also a favorite. I'm gonna use it, maybe I'll do a little dot here. You can see it's practically neon. I think this would work on a wide range of skin tones. And let's just really go for it here because these colors underneath are so light, you're gonna be able to see Poppy just fine. And it's really not gonna change the experience of what Poppy looks like on my skin because I'll just build it up so you can see the color. Like you really can build these up if you want a pigmented cheek. So don't let the marketing of Say's Instagram fool you into thinking these are like incredibly sheer. Um, they're not. And now I look like I have a sunburn because I just keep adding more and more blush <laughs> on my face. Um, but you get the idea. I just keep adding more so you can see the color, but I think I've, I think I've added enough. Okay, so with Poppy, you can see that even though my application's very messy at this point, um, you know, you get that brightness coming through. I tried to tone it down a little bit because I went overboard, but you can get such a bright cheek and just do like a beautiful, glossy, bright ass cheek look and it's so pretty. I like this formula so much. I am probably gonna pick up the berry shade because I just want a little bit of diversity here. And at this point, I actually don't have any more berry shades in my collection. I only have one, which is the Matte Glow Play blush in Rosie Does It. And I love that one. It's so pretty. So I might pick up the, the fourth Say one. The longevity on this is not the same as what you would get from like, a powder blush, but that's just the nature of a cream or a liquid. To be honest, I don't really pay attention to longevity of products that much because I'm working from home. I reapply products throughout the day. I, I just don't track that as much. And I apologize if that's something that you care about, but it's just not something I really think about that much. I've decided to add another blush to the mix because I realized YouTube hasn't seen it on me yet, but Instagram has. So I'm gonna apply the MAC Glow Play Blush in Rosie Does It, as well as the Cover Effects Monochromatic Blush Duo in Spiced Cinnamon. First, let's talk about Spiced Cinnamon. Frankly, I'm not a matte blush person, so I'm probably just gonna go in with the, uh, the sort of shimmery side. Cover FX sent this to me. I actually reached out to them and I asked if they would be willing to send it to me for my dupes video because I thought that based on Temptalia's or Temptalia's swatches that this could be a dupe for Hourglass at night. And while it's not an exact dupe for Hourglass at night, the shimmery shade is what I wanted Hourglass at night to be in the first place. It has more of that like brick, rosy red, quality to it. Whereas I think everyone was confused when Hourglass at night came out, it had that like marble of highlighter running through it, but it didn't look at all like that red shade in the pan. It was just like an orangey bronze. This is what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be that kind of like shimmery, rosy terracotta. So I <laughs> really like it. I did get a heads up from a few friends that this is crazy pigmented. So what I'm gonna do, um, or what I always do is take my Eco Tools 360 sheer brush. I kind of swirl it around intentionally many times so that it's uh, evenly distributed. And then I just rub it on the back of my hand. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. It reminds me a lot of the Bare Minerals Blonzer. Let me pull that out. Nope, it's different. The Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Rose is a lot deeper and much more bronzy brown, whereas Spiced Cinnamon definitely, if you see it in person, pulls a lot more pink. And there's a and there's like a pink shimmer running through it instead of like a gold shimmer. I'm just gonna build it up a little bit to make sure that you can see it. There you go. You have another sort of um, flushed, burnt cheek option. Uh, you certainly don't have to apply it that heavy handed, but I just wanted to make sure you'd be able to see it. It's another one of those that you could probably skip highlighter with. Look at that beautiful sheen coming through. It's stunning. And with the Eco Tools sheer brush, I don't feel like I have an issue with the pigmentation. I do know that my friend Kaki mentioned she found this way too pigmented and difficult to work with. Um, but if I'm just super careful with that, you know, any stippling brush I think would work, you can get something that's even, even lighter than this. Lastly, I'm gonna show you Max Rosie Does It. Oh, this took me by surprise. You can see there, that is a shade that I don't own anywhere else in my collection. I actually, uh, Mac was having like a 30% off sale 
and I'm obsessed with the glow play formula. So I told my boyfriend, I was like, get your ass over here. Out of all of these shades online, what blush do you pick for me? And he picked this one because he said, I didn't have anything like it in my collection. Isn't he so cute? He knows what makeup I own. And when you sheer this out, it becomes the prettiest flush of like, it, it looks pink on the skin, I'll show you. But I just take any brush. This is quite a pigmented shade. And then I just kind of tap it on my hand. I'm just gonna go in carefully first. And at first you're like, it might be a little, a little bruisy, a little bruisy looking, but it's not. I might just go in with the Eco Tools brush because it's just such a good brush. Yeah, much better. See how that doesn't look like bright ass purple? It's just, I'll try to build it up so you can really see. I just find that if you look again at this cream powder hybrid type product, like the Bounce and Blur blush from Bare Minerals, this, it just looks more airbrushed on the skin. Whereas, you know, even though the Cover FX one and the Bare Minerals bronzers are powders and you would expect those to look just as airbrushed, something about the cream to powder formula blurs the skin. You can see the Cover FX one here still got a little bit of texture coming through because they're shine. But over here, it blurred the skin. So anything having to do with a cream powder hybrid now is the only blush I pretty much want to reach for. And this just gives you much more, this gives you like I've been out in the sun vibes and I got burned. This gives you I've been out in the snow and I'm fucking cold vibes. I had a lot of fun reviewing and applying all of these. Let me know your thoughts on these products. Do you have different opinions on them? Were you able to get that color pop cheek do shit to work? Because Lord knows that was awful. Please leave any video requests for me in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.